Hey guys, how you doing? Ron Raymond here from the Ram Report. Welcome to the report card today for uh, Friday. It is March 1st. Hope you're having yourself a good start to your weekend. As always, don't forget, subscribe to our channel by tapping that notification bell in the top right hand corner or hit the subscribe button below this video if you are using a mobile device. Today, the report card is brought to you by the Ram Report. And today on the report card, we're going to do like we do each and every time we do this show. We're going to talk about value percentage play, performance cycles, and uh, the rest of the room report fundamentals are about player availability and money management system. But for this segment, we're going to concentrate on the big three. Do I have value in my selection? Is the percentage play in my favor or the bookmaker's favor? And the performance cycles, where are we catching this team right now on the season? Are they bullish, neutral, or bearish? Speaking of uh, neutral, bearish, and uh, uh, neutral, bearish, and uh, bullish, hey, I got to get that. You can tell it's a Friday, right? We're Got to get uh, everything in sync here. All right, uh, you can see in the NBA, 71.6% um, of the games for the favorites have won straight up, which is uh, pretty good. But look at that against the point spread, 48.6%. Hey, we said it yesterday on the report card, or the um, I think it was the NBA pick show. I said, you know, a lot of double-digit favorites. And when you get that, obviously, you're going to get a lot of favorites winning. But the bookmaker is doing a good job trying to balance out the books. 52.4% of the favorites have covered the spread this year. 477 for the underdogs. And when you look at the over-under, same thing, 52 and 48. That's their job is to get these two columns close as 50 as possible. Because at the end of the day, what's the bookmaker's job? Get 100 people in the room. Get 50 betting the Lakers, 50 betting the Raptors. And uh, they make their money in the middle. And uh, look at the uh, over-under on the, uh, sorry, the uh, favorites on the year. 70.9, 29.1 on the season for the underdogs winning straight up, which is not that, when you think about it, look at, um, let's go look at the NHL and see how the uh, favorites and underdogs, look at that, 59 and 40%, which is is normally about, uh, you know, in money line sports like baseball and hockey, which is kind of average uh, for the, uh, the the favorites to win 60% of the time on the year, 40% for the underdog. And what I like to do is I like to take the, um, the short-term cycles, long-term cycles in the market, and then compare them to the daily activity, right? So if on a seven-day average, if we're at 65.7% of the favorites winning, we're 5% above the year average. So maybe that's a little hint to scale down a bit. Three-day average, 80%, 75% on the one-day average last night. So uh, a lot of games last night. In fact, 9-3 and three for the favorites in the NHL. And only uh, one time this week, the underdogs won. It was on a low-volume day. So this is why you got to keep your finger on the pulse in the market to see when is the time that you want to pull the trigger on those favorites or underdogs, right? You got to time, how many times do you hear people say time to market? You got to time to market. And that doesn't just mean the stock market or the crypto market. It means also the sports betting market. Because at the end of the day, always remember what goes up must come down. And it's your job to find when is the time to be patient and disciplined and get on that right track to making that pick. All right, speaking of picks, we had a pretty good night last night. In fact, let me go and show you guys what we did last night with our uh, premium picks. Our free pick one, we had the uh, Brooklyn Nets. Hey, they, uh, we took them on the money line. It was a nice victory. We had Vegas plus one and a half. So we was sweating that out a bit. It was three nothing Boston. We had Buffalo plus one and a half. We had Winnipeg plus one and a half. That's the only one we lost last night. We won with Orlando, Golden State straight up and Denver. So we uh, a hat trick last night in the NBA. And at the end of the day, you want winners, right? And sometimes you're gonna have to pay the price to get those winners. And uh, we uh, we paid a little bit of a price last night, but we got rewarded today with some nice winning picks. All right, let's go to the report card NBA. So what you do is get the uh, report card, go to your dashboard, and then once you get inside your dashboard, look for report card. Go to the report card NBA tab, and then go to game matchups, and there we go. Uh, let me pick a good game for you guys here to uh, handicap tonight. I like to you know I like to look for the A's and B's. Not too crazy about handicapping the C type games. But um, let me see here. What do we got? C again today. What are the Raptors? The Raptors are a C type team, so I'm not going to do that one. You know what? I think this is the uh, the game of the night. Dallas and Boston. Eh? You're probably sitting there going, good, he's going to do that one. That's the one I wanted. Because why not? You got the best matchup of the evening, right? So you got Boston minus 10. And um, what's the number one rule in the Rain Report? We're looking for value. So um, minus 9.17 is my line. Minus 10 is the line of the bookmaker. So if you like Boston, you got fair market value. If you like the Dallas Mavericks, you've got excellent value. I had them at plus 7.75. You're getting plus 10. So check mark for Dallas for value. The percentage play favors Boston at 77.9% compared to 56.2 for the Dallas uh, Mavericks. And if you follow the rain report, and just like I showed you in the market report, anything over 40%, if you like, remember, if underdogs are winning, in the NBA, they're winning at 30%, right? And if we're getting 56%, 
on a B-type team. The only bad news is we're taking we're taking on a team who's only lost three home games all season at the TD Garden. That's Boston 27 and three, but Dallas 16 and 12 on the road this year. And we're going to give them a 56% chance of winning, but minus 10. I got to look at the injury. Anytime I see a line like minus 10, I got to go look at the injury report because the line will tell me if there's something wrong. With, you know, to me, I got to go look at Doncic. Is he in or out or uh, other uh, key factors of his teammates if they're in and out of the uh, lineup tonight? All right, so that's the percentage play. It does favor the, uh, the Boston Celtics. And the last one, the uh, performance cycles. And you know what? Look at the cycles on these guys right here. Boston Celtics, they've um, they've been bullish the last 40 days. You know what that means? They're either 7-0, 6-1, 5-2 in their last seven contests, while the Dallas Mavericks, same thing, and they've been on that run for the last 20 days, so close to a month. And the thing is, for the uh, the Boston Celtics, a month and a half. So um, you know what? When you look at the performance cycles here, both of them probably get a check mark. but let's go to the, uh, the tiebreaker. And when you got an A against a B, and an A-type team in the rim report is a team that has a 60 or higher win percentage. Those like classify A-type teams. Those are your top dogs. And then the B, your, your average Joes, right? Average Joes and Janes. Those are your teams with a 50 to 59.9 percentage. And when Boston plays those average Joes, um, they're 18 and 3. Wow. Look at this. Boston, when they play the, the top dogs, like the Alphas, 8 and 7 straight up. So they're, they're very average. But when they play the beatables, they're... Um, 38 and 5 straight up and then for the uh, Dallas Mavericks against the A's yeah not that good 5 and 13 so right there tells me I'm probably off Dallas tonight and again sometimes the best bet you make is the one you don't make and uh, this is why you watch the show right because you got to be disciplined and patient just like I write in my book here the, um, the 24 hour rule if you go to learn and if you want to learn about sports handicap and I wrote this book last August called the 24 hour rule celebrating your victories right embracing patience and discipline in sports betting and uh, if you want to see the content of the book it's all right here and uh, you probably want to start if you're an experienced uh, you know a, a medium to experience better um, you, you probably want to start to uh, chapter 8 the art of value betting right you got to find value just in the uh, in the rain report the power of trends and systems the DMVI the daily market value index the type of teams which I talked about a B and C C are teams below 500 what approach you should take on betting on different sports, understanding utilizing the game cycles, bearish, bullish, and neutral, which I talked about, strength of schedule, probably my favorite chapter in the book, advanced betting strategies, building your own system. You know, if you've been doing this a while and you're like, you know what, I think I got a handle on this and I like my system, build your own system. I give you the, the uh, uh, some basic tips on how to build your own system and the future of sports betting. How do you uh, incorporate AI into your sports betting? It's really tough to do, but I think what AI does it, uh, it's like an assistant, right? Some things you just can't, uh, you need it to help you like with your algorithms and more of calculations or uh, analyzing things. And I think this is where AI can help with your betting system. All right, guys, that is the uh, 24 hour rule. Again, you can get it on amazon.com or .ca. And I wrote this book last August and it's been doing very well. I want to thank everybody who's bought the book and I uh, appreciate all your support. And uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying the shows. If you do enjoy the show, please hit that like button. If you want to leave a comment, uh, you know, positive or, uh, or, you know, feedback. I love feedback. And it, when you guys give me feedback, I, I, I strive off that because, you know, some of the stuff that I have here on the uh, the website, I'll give you a great example of the feedback that I take and I cor and I include it into uh, um, some of the stuff here at uh, the Rain Report. You see this report card we just talked about? Well, one of our um, one of our clients said, you know what, Ron? I love the neutral and the bullish stuff, but it doesn't tell me how many days have been neutral or bullish. And I said, you know what? That's a great point. So I took that feedback. I incorporated it into the, uh, into the, the report card in the, in, the, um, in the cycle phases. So now we know if a team's been, how many days they've been bullish or neutral. And it's all based on great feedback from, from you guys, the, uh, the customers and the, uh, the, the viewers, right? So appreciate you guys. Uh, again, I'm off this weekend. I, I coach football, so I, I coach on weekends. And... Um, getting ready for our provincial team to uh, take on the summer. So we're in training camp. And um, yeah, so I take the weekends off. But Monday to Friday, I do these videos. And uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying them. And I'll see you back here on a cash out Monday with another edition of The Report Card. Cheers.